Welcome back to the Vet SOS Podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. Vet SOS is a proud member and glad to be supported by the Parade Deck platform. Uh, remember, don't drown and see a transition. Grab the Vet SOS Lifeline. Eric, I'm pumped up today. We got a guest Dude. that you and I met at the MIC. Uh, nothing but energy, living the adventurous life out in Hawaii. <laughs> we got Stephen Kaplan with us, who is just going to tell us about his amazing organization, what he's got going on. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, as always, here with Eric. Eric, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm pumped up. Like you said, man, we met uh, Steve over at the MIC. Um, this dude's a, a brother in arms, uh, a brother in Christ. Like, this is, a, this is a dude who's got something going on that's super special uh out there and i just i can't wait i can't wait for him to tell everyone that's listening what's going on so uh, i'm gonna shut up and uh as always man <laughs> pitter, pitter patter let's get at her all right so we'll jump right into it here stephen kaplan's retired navy seal and owner of trident adventures he grew up in connecticut and attended the Elam bible institute to be a pastor believing his calling was to be a seal he enlisted in the navy and attended bud's class 244 and eventually graduated class 248 he served with seal team one naval special warfare unit one and training attachment three after 16 years of service, Stephen was medically retired due to some serious internal organ damage, along with various other injuries. For all the medical reasons he was retired for, Stephen uses those reasons as the central focus of all the activities he currently does in Trident Adventures. Yeah. Trident Adventures is an adventure company that scuba dives, snorkels, shoots, hunts, skydives, and helicopter casts into the ocean. Trident Adventures is the only company in the world doing what they do. Steven, you showed us some videos when we were at the MIC. You told us some stories. This, what you got going on to me sound, whoa, we lost, just lost Steve. <laughs> hey, there you go. Got you back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what, what, what you got going on over there seems to be like the, the ultimate man dream like perfect job <laughs> you know just absolutely amazing so we're so glad you're here with us today how are you doing today i'm doing great i actually just woke up it's uh really early here in hawaii it's still dark outside <laughs> <laughs> awesome so let, let's start off with the transition process what, what was your whole transition process like leaving the navy there especially with the medical piece yeah so i was uh i was told i was being medically retired that freaking sucks by the way and uh I was told it was going to take three weeks. So I went to my good friend, Jim, who's also a frogman like myself. And I asked him if I could stay at his place during this transition. I thought that was a big ask. Like we sleep on your couch for three weeks. It's not like he's a, a single guy living in an apartment. Like he's a family man. He's got his wife, he's got his kids, he's got his business and everything. So, so uh, he went and asked his wife, Danny, and Danny said, sure, no problem. You can stay. So I stayed in his spare room for three weeks. Uh, meanwhile, as I'm transitioning out of the military now, after I've been in for 16 years, I told my wife, I say, why don't you, uh, why don't you go to Florida? We're, we're in Hawaii right now. She said, why don't you go to Florida? Basically start a new life for us over there. Is that, I mean, it's kind of the common story amongst people when they get out. I figured we'd go to where it's familiar to us, either where you grew up or where your family is. So that's where our family was, both mine and hers, was in the Tampa area of Florida. So she left. Sent her to Florida. We bought a house. She signed a contract to work for, uh, I think it was Lockheed Martin. I never remember. She just worked for so many companies uh, for, for a whole year and waiting for me to show up with all of her household goods. <laughs> so she lives in this empty home now. Well, meanwhile, I was told, uh, well, this is not going to be a three-week process. This could be a nine-week process. Oh, man, I just sent my wife home uh, or sent her to Florida living in my buddy's spare room. Let me go tell him. So I go tell him like, bro, this might take up to nine weeks. And he said, Oh, let me go ask Danny. Uh, so he went and asked Danielle, his wife. And uh, <laughs> she's like, sure, you can stay. Well, that nine weeks turned into a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and they were well, super great. Friendship. Yeah. No kidding. Huh? Uh, so, I mean, I mean, I was, I'm a really good guest though. You know, I cooked, I cleaned, I, I painted their house. I did all their gardening. I did as much as I could to not be a nuisance and to make myself as absent as possible. Cause that's a long time to be living in someone, someone else's home, but they were super gracious to me. Meanwhile, my wife fulfilled her year long, uh, time in, uh, working for, for that company. And now we have a house over there. And while I was transitioning out, I worked for, uh, CBS, the television studio, and I worked uh, uh, or the network, and then I worked uh, Hawaii Five O, CBS or uh, Magnum PI, 
NCIS, I don't know, a bunch of Netflix series. I worked as a as a consultant, basically, you know, don't put your gun like this. It's or you know, like this. It's like that, guys. You know, and one guy goes the this way, sideways. one guy goes that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll do one of these things. It doesn't actually work really well. So yeah, but I worked on uh, all these television shows as a as a military consultant. I, my <laughs> my role was SEAL tech advisor. That sounds cool, but it was really weird because I never told anybody I was a SEAL. Like that was, I told everybody I was a Zamboni driver. But now, now I wear the title <laughs> SEAL tech advisor. It's like oh, I can't get around that. Everybody, it's on the call sheet and everything. <laughs> There's my name. So that was really weird. That's the first time I've ever been. Uh, I guess publicly exposed as a seal, and like I said, never told anybody. Um, I was either a I was either a Zamboni driver, a blimp line handler, or a male cheerleader. <laughs> That's what I always told everyone. <laughs> the male cheerleader is my favorite. My, I'm my sure favorite it is. is the Zamboni driver in Hawaii. I mean, that, that's <laughs> <laughs> we do have an ice rink here. <laughs> yeah. Well, the hardest thing. Actually, the weirdest one was when uh, someone goes, I'm a Zamboni driver, too. No way. I never thought I'd be the another guy at <laughs> <in> the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I'm working for these television shows. I, pro- I already worked myself out of a job in, in, the, in the teams because it was supposed to be a three-week process. So I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs. On, I don't have an idle bone in my body. That's why I'm doing all this other stuff. Well, I thought to myself, why not start a, why not try to start a company? I got nothing but time right now. So that, that's and then, and then as I started trying to do ventures and it really came, came to like, well, what are they processing out of the military for? Well, all the injuries I sustained primarily to my lungs. I had all these pulmonary embolisms, uh, coughed up most of my lungs onto the floor. Uh, they're purple, by the way. Um, I hope you never had to find that out. <laughs> and then uh, all these other injuries that I got, uh, most of them you can't really see because they're mostly on the inside. And, uh, uh, so all the things I was told I could never do in the military again, that, that's I was like, tell me I can't do something. So I made a company around all that. So that's all. Like I was told I could never scuba dive again. I could never be around um, uh, gunfire again, anything of, they considered high caliber. I said, what's high caliber to you? They said nine mil. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Millions of rounds later. I couldn't be, I couldn't do anything with extreme altitude changes like skydiving or work in helicopters or anything like that. So now I have an arm of skydiving to my company and, and I have a helicopter and we jump out into the ocean. <laughs> so it sounds yeah, like your company was, was, yeah, it sounds like your company was built on a, a watch this kind of mentality. It was more of a double middle finger to, to everyone who <laughs> said I couldn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. I so uh, he that. just remake the trident <laughs> and, you know, two middle fingers and, <laughs> I could, but I'm also a respectful person. I say that jokingly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. man. And so tell you us. opened up with saying, like, um, yeah, this is like the man stream and all that stuff. Actually, most of the people that join us are kids and women. Really? It's kind of funny. Like, I've had three-year-olds jump out of my helicopter with me. Wow. Like, we do some great, and we're the only company in the world where you can do anything like this. Well, legally, at least. <laughs> yeah. So, so, okay. So let's do that. Let's, let's dive into Trident Adventures, unpack it for us. Give us, give us whatever you can give us, man, but let us know what we can, how, like, what, what do people need to know about it? Yeah. Just show up. <laughs> so this is my favorite thing. This is my favorite thing. I love taking people that are scared out of their minds. That's my, I, I don't like taking adrenaline junkies, although they're welcome. I have them doing like pull-ups. You know the Gracie family, like Hoyt's Gracie and all yeah. those guys? Yeah. So I have these guys doing pull-ups on the skids of my helicopter before they jump in. So I like the adrenaline junkies. I like the tough guys. Um, and, and I like to challenge them doing something they never thought that they can do. But my favorite people are the, the, the scared-to-death ones who are literally at that moment with me trying to conquer their fears. You know, people ask me, you know, they assume, I should say, all the time that uh, – that because I was a Navy SEAL, I was fearless. Like, fearless? I had the same stupid fears everybody else has. Like Nobody likes being shot at or blown up or this might be your last breath, you know, taking them left down that street. You know, like, you have the same fears everybody else does. You just practice courage. There's the difference. And courage is not the absence of fear. It's what you do in the face of fear. That's and right. that revolutionizes how you think. And when you develop um, a lifestyle of facing your fears, 
it changes everything about you. And what I love to do is take people that are afraid of the ocean, afraid of swimming, afraid of or claustrophobic, or afraid of the of uh, heights, whatever. They have all these phobias, and I love uh, drawing out of them the courage that they've always had. Like, I don't give them anything. I don't impart anything into anybody. I draw out of them what they already had. They just didn't know it. And that's the coolest thing. Love you know, and, and, and I truly believe that fear is a sin. How many times in the scriptures does Jesus tell someone to fear not? Or God says, don't fear. You know, it's a, it's a big thing. That's a commandment. Don't fear. <laughs> yep. Fear is faith. Fear is faith in the wrong thing. Yep. It's just, that's all it is. So you, you believe something bad is going to happen. So you reduce your life to accommodate your fear. So I'd say, well, why don't we just do the opposite? Believe something good is going to happen uh, and watch how your life changes. And as a believer, this is this was uh, <laughs> even in the SEAL teams, like one of my nicknames was Psycho because uh, I had a death wish. I didn't have a death wish. I didn't want to die. I just wasn't afraid of dying. Now, let me let me set the record there. I'm a. Um, I don't want to die and I'm afraid of the manner of dying, like the, the manner in which I die. I'm just not afraid of where I'm going. There you go. So, so um, yeah, I don't want to get shot in the head. <laughs> that would suck, but <laughs> I know where I'm going. So it's a win-win scenario in everything in every scenario you can come up with. Like I either like in combat, I'd either win the battle or I go home to, to Jesus. Yeah. Can't threaten me with heaven. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> So if you take that mentality and you bring it to everything in life, I mean, and it sounds extreme, but it is the best way to live. If you bring that into business, like I have, like I love when my staff tells me we have an emergency, you know, this, this critical thing just happened. Okay. Wait a minute. Is somebody dead? No. Is someone about to be dead? Do I have to go to my buddy's funeral? No, it's not an emergency anymore. Now yeah. let's tackle it from this perspective. It's like everything changes when you start thinking like this. Um, and you can make more rational, cool-headed uh, decisions. It's, it's just a mind shift. And all it is is courage. How do you conquer your fears? And when you do that, you're, you're, the way you think changes. And what I love to do is take my guests and, and show them what that looks like. And so how do you I do, do that? By drawing, uh, I, well, one, I, I either uh, indirectly or directly teach them about <laughs> what Jesus says. because <laughs> He's the ultimate source of awesomeness. So... Uh, so uh, I, I, I do that depending on my audience. It depends on how direct or indirect I can be because I am a four business company too. Um, and so I, I give them stories. I teach them about things that I've been through myself, how I conquered fear myself and how I will be there with them. It's a bit of a security blanket. And then what's interesting, like scuba diving, for example, I'll take people who never dove a day in their life and you're, you're going straight to the ocean. You're not doing any pool work. You're not doing something nice and easy. You're going straight into the bumpy ocean with the surges and the waves and everything. And, and I tell them all the time, you're with the most dangerous thing in the ocean. Me. <laughs> what else can harm you? Look, I got a cool knife. <laughs> and then I take them underwater and I, and, and I hold their hands. I, I've held the hands of, uh, I won't say who, because I'll be embarrassed, but all these UFC fighters. <laughs> Water makes mice of men. It's hilarious. It wasn't the crazy, but uh, anyway, take, I take them underwater and, and just, I slowly let go and I slowly kind of um, uh, uh, remove myself from their, their eyesight, from their physical presence. I'm always there, but I'm not physically, you know, holding their hand or holding their tank or whatever. And, and it's the, it's the moment. It's the best thing when they turn around and they go, where'd I, where'd I go? And I was always behind them the whole time. And then that, that clicks. Like, oh, I can do this. And then they yeah. continue doing whatever it is that they're doing. Scuba diving, snorkeling, jumping out of helicopters with me, whatever it is. Skydiving. We do everything. Shooting. We do a lot of shooting. Mostly with people have never shot a day in their life. They're the easiest to teach, by the way. Military guys are the hardest. I can and see by that. guys, I mean men. Military men yeah, are yeah. the hardest to teach. Yeah. <laughs> Get a lot of bad habits. They know everything. Yeah. Yep. So talk about what are, what are the different arms? So we talk about Trident Adventures. What are the different arms? So if I'm looking at your company as something I want to go do, right? Something You've got something I want. What are the different arms there? Uh, I would say primarily uh, we scuba dive and snorkel every day. We go out a couple times a day. I got a dive boat um, that um, can accommodate any type of water activity. So that's scuba diving. That's all the certifications that we put people through from zero to hero to. Uh, the snorkeling, the free divings, uh, spear fishing, all of that. 
as well as uh, the helicopter operation. And we're the only company in the world where you can do this. So I, I have a pretty sick looking helicopter. It's all camouflage gray, so it looks really Navy, even though it's not. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we, we, have our, we have our helicopter. It's a twin star helicopter, so it's really sexy. It's one of the best looking helicopters on the island too. And what we do is we take the boat out. So people that are doing their normal snorkel scuba dive or just want to do whale watching. And the helicopter shows up and we jump right next to the boat and everyone hops on the boat. And if they want to go scuba diving, you put the gear on and go diving. Um, let me see what else we do. So we do inter island tours with the helicopter. We have a hunting operation. So I'm on the island of Oahu. Our hunting operation is on Lanai. We take our helicopter and we fly to Lanai. Uh, this is, by the way, this is stupid expensive. So if you have anyone that wants to call me, just you got to have a lot of money to do this. Uh, so we, we fly. <laughs> Helicopters are expensive, and I'll, this will make sense. So we, we fly to from Oahu to Lanai. Uh, we have everything we do is private. Uh, we, you have your own private guide. We partnered with the Pineapple Brothers, which is a hunting operation out there. Um, and you have everything. So it's just you and a guide, and you go, you kill access deer. So you get your trophy buck, and then you get your your meat and stuff. Uh, you stay the night at the Four Seasons. And then the next day, if you if you want to, you can you can shoot some more dough, and then we package all the meat for you. We debone it all, we package it, and we send it to your home of residence, and we could taxidermy it as well. And then you and so you don't have to touch anything. You just shoot and stay at the Four Seasons. It's like the hunter's paradise. Then we <laughs> you hop back in the helicopter. You fly back to Oahu. And you're, you're with me like this whole time. Fly back to Oahu, and on the way back. Uh, we jump out of the helicopter into the ocean. I take you scuba diving. I teach you how to ride underwater scooters like James Bond. Uh, and then the boat picks us up and brings us back to where we started. That's your hunting trip. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so it's a bit of pampering. It's a lot of um, it's of shooting, and it's a lot of adventure. Sean, if you want to know what range. I want for Christmas next year or this year, if you want to know what I want for Christmas, this is it, buddy. <laughs> Save up your money. Save up. Oh. My you should see what my overhead is on that. <laughs> That's not even um, the, the cost of flying to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, or whatever your stay is out here, too. Yeah. Like I said, it's stupid expensive. And the other thing we do is we have a gun range. We get there by helicopter. It's another stupid expensive thing. And we fly. Um, we, we do all this, like, nap the earth flying, so you know that low-level stuff uh, through the valleys and the mountains and everything. It's pretty epic. And we land on our private gun range. Um, it's ran by a friend of mine. So everything I do, I do with partnerships. Uh, so I don't actually own this gun range. I don't actually own the hunting operation. I partner with other companies and I pay them a godly amount of, amount of money to be able to advertise it through my platform. Um, so we land on the gun range and everything we do is Navy SEAL. So the gun range itself is kind of lame, to be honest, if, especially if you went to like Texas and was shooting out in Texas or in Florida, where uh, it's uh, a little more gun friendly and you have a lot more land. Well, land is limited here in Hawaii, and they're not very gun friendly. So we have to work within the legal parameters. But what we do is super cool because um, it's a one to one ratio, one Navy SEAL to one shooter. And we only take up to four people at a time. And what you do in two hours of shooting would typically take about you know, a week's worth of shooting. Wow. So we have a whole team that's in the back jamming magazines for you the whole time. There, we have a whole team that's constantly doing all the targets. So we have steel and paper targets. Uh, meanwhile, for your, we have a range safety officer whose only job is there to make sure everything's actually safe. Uh, he doesn't run anything. He just makes sure it's safe and ultimately has all the authority, but the line officers are all SEALs. So if we have four people there, we're going to have four SEALs. And we teach people how to shoot, move, and communicate. And my favorite is taking people who have never touched a gun in their life, learning to shoot while moving, which is more complicated than most people think, so you're doing forward movements, backward movements, side to side, and then you're learning how to shoot and move with one another, doing like IMTs, immediate action drills, or IMTs, yeah, whatever. I don't know. It's been a while. <laughs> That's incredible. So yeah. you got you got Trident Adventures. You, you're you're doing all the cool stuff. You're having a lot of fun. I think it's really important that you that you that everybody hears you say like all these trips I get to go on. I mean that's that's not a bad business model, bro. Like you get to go do all the fun no, stuff not. too. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty dope business model. Um, but you've got something else going on, right? You've got, uh, you've got the honor watch foundation. Yep. In Talk fact, to uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we have an honor watch foundation event. So 
with that, we pretty much take people that are uh, down their luck is a good way of putting it. And we give them the best day of their lives. No strings attached. Most of the time, we don't actually post anything because people don't necessarily want to be exposed for going through their worst crap. Uh, if they allow us to post it, we will. So there's very few things because, I mean, it's a very sensitive thing when someone's like, yeah, I'm really suicidal. Please tell the world. Right. Uh, or someone's like, yeah, I'm riddled with cancer right now. Please tell the planet and how you did something awesome for me. So a lot of people are into that. So what, what we do is I ask people, and there really are no strings attached. Say, listen, we're going to give you the best day of your life. If you allow us, please let us make a video about this so we can tell more people like you that this actually exists because we have the funding for it. I just need the candidates. Uh, but if they're not comfortable with that, or if there's like a, a hint of hesitation, the hint of hesitation means no. Right. So we just leave it alone uh, <clears throat> because there really are no strings attached. Uh, and what we do is like we had uh, this. All right. A lot of what we do are people with ALS. You know what that is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Louis Eric's disease is like the worst disease on the planet. A good friend of mine named Sean. Uh, I, I watched him go from being able to stand up out of his wheelchair to, I mean, he looks like uh, Stephen Hawkins now. So, I mean, he, he's really messed up. So I have a really, uh, I have a hole in my heart for, for people like, like Sean. And we take people, especially with ALS. We had one guy named Dave. This guy shows up to my shop and he's uh, part of the, uh, the Gleason foundation. Steve Gleason was a football player. Yep. Um, <laughs> And he has a he has ALS and he has a foundation that helps people with ALS. So anyway, this guy shows up to my shop with a Gleason Foundation shirt on. Now I'm partnered with these guys and I had no idea he was coming. So I was a little upset because I would have literally, we have a red carpet, would have rolled out the red carpet for this guy. Um, but he comes in his wheelchair with his wife and uh, says, hey, I'm, I'm here to go on the boat. Like, You're here to come on the boat? He said, yeah. Yes, he said, this is my bucket list item is to hold an octopus before I die. I said, hold an octopus? He looked at his wife, I looked at him, and I go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. He looks at me, he's like, going to cry. I go, he goes, why is that stupid? I said, what, do you want, you want me to go scuba dive down, find you an octopus, bring it onto the boat so that you can hold this thing before you die? He goes, well, yeah. I go, well, that's stupid. He goes, why? I said, because I'll just take you diving, you get your own stupid octopus. He goes, I could do that. He goes, yeah, you could do that. <laughs> so like I said, I wish I'd known he was coming. I would have told him way ahead of time. And then I looked at his wife and I said, by the way, I'm going to throw him out of a helicopter and then I'm going to take him scuba diving. And then he's going to get his own stupid octopus. And that's going to be the best day of your life. That's a real bucket list item, buddy. So what I do is I get these guys to come in. I don't treat them like victims. I treat them like victors. And uh, I just give them the opportunity to be victorious in their life. So, uh, so that's exactly what I did. I brought this guy, I wheeled him out to the helicopter in his wheelchair. Once I could prop the guy up, uh, he could stand for, I don't know, probably like a good 20, 30 seconds. He, he, he wasn't, he wasn't that far gone, but I try to take these guys before they get tricked. Once they get tricked, I can't take them scuba diving for obvious reasons. Um, but I put like three wetsuits on this guy. So he's crazy, positively buoyant. And, uh, myself and another seal named Conrad Kress, he used to be a commander in the teams. Uh, but we got him up in the helicopter. We had to hold him up on the skids and we had the guy totally jump off. Oh, let me tell you this. So this guy, so we we're doing all of our practice runs because we had to take the helicopter and we had to come down, you know, do this like three, two, one count, three, two, one, come down low, low and slow. And then, then we have to kind of, well, you tilt the nose and then you come up. Uh, we had to get him on that because he can't hover that low for that long without it starting to be dangerous. So we had to have some forward movement. And he comes up to me and goes, I want to jump higher. I don't want to jump three or four feet. I want to jump higher. I said, here's what you can't do. He says, why? And he said, cross your arms, cross his arms, start lifting up on his, on his elbows. And he goes, I said, tell me when it's, it hurts. He goes, oh, right there, right there. I said, that's why, because you can hit the water and you can dislocate your shoulders, buddy. So I love you to death. I love your balls is what I told him. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love it, dude. And like the guy made me cry. I didn't show him because I put my cool guy glasses on because I got to be a tough guy and you can seal, you know. He made me cry three times. Um, and then, uh, and then he comes up to me, he stands up out of his wheelchair, hobbles over, which is, takes an ungodly amount of strength for him to do. And he goes, see, look, look, he holds his arms down. Look, try to push my arms down. Now he's been in the back doing this the whole time, trying to figure out how to keep his arms down. And I lift up on his arms and sure enough, he'd keep it down. So we had the guy jump at like 15 feet, which is, you know, 10 feet higher than I wanted to go. And he did great. And then I took him scuba diving and 
Uh, so, like, he doesn't have dexterity in his fingers to hold his nose to equalize. I don't know if you guys have ever been diving, but you have to blow. Just like you come down an airplane, you got to equalize when you come down. So, uh, I had, first of all, you had a bunch of snot up there. So, I had to get him on the surface. I literally shoved my finger up his nose, had him blow snot rockets in both sides. And then I had to hold his nose so he can uh, he can equalize on the way down. But totally found him as octopus. And I've never seen an octopus act the way it did. It was totally a God thing. And for whatever reason, he wanted the octopus on his foot. So I had, I don't know, maybe as a foot fetish, but I had the octopus crawling all over his foot. I had it crawling over his arm. I had the coolest pictures ever of this guy. I mean, they're epic pictures. And there's a big octopus just hanging out in his arm with the glare coming off his mask and everything. It's the coolest thing. And I had him down there with his wife. So it was an epic day. But that's the stuff we do with Honor Watch Foundation. Tomorrow, we have, we have two active duty guys that we're sponsoring. I can't really say who they are what or, or why. And then I have another guy. His name is Adam. Adam has got uh, club feet, and he is um, he is this year going to be wheelchair bound for the rest of his life. He's already a scuba diver. He's he's actually a buddy of ours, and he's uh, so we figured while he can still stand, why not give him this best day of his life? So we're going to throw him out of the helicopter tomorrow and take him diving with PPV and scooters and everything. So that's what we do with Honor Watch Foundation, and it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, like we have one lady who's ALS. I mean, she's completely gone. Uh, she, we, we, we put a brand new deck on our boat just to accommodate her electric wheelchair. So we brought her on. And as a Honor Watch Foundation event, uh, we had her bring all of everyone that she considered uh, a friend and all of her family. And we just gave, we had her watch all of the people that she loves have a great day. That's cool. So, so we do a lot of stuff like that too. Yeah, we can take people hunting in wheelchairs and whatever. Like we, yeah, do, we do a lot of cool stuff. I love it, man. One of my favorite things, Steve, when I met you is do you radiate? You exude like this victor mentality. Yep. Right. Yeah. And I just I love that. And and of course I know that's because you're walking in victory with Christ. You're walking in freedom of Christ. Like I, I understand that um as a fellow believer, but dude, just like your heart for other people, your heart to make sure that the people who are in those dark moments um, get to see just a little bit of what, of what the love of Christ feels like, dude, this is awesome. And I am so honored to be your friend. I'm so honored to be your brother, dude. Um, I can't believe it, but like, we're, we're at like just about the 30 minute mark, which is crazy what? to me. Cause Already? I think, yeah. I think <laughs> you said like seven so much words. more to talk about. We'll, have to so, do this again. well, then, well then we'll have you back on. Yeah. So but that's, before that's he goes, that. Before he goes, though, Eric, we need to we need to talk about the uh, VA approved professional program. Oh yeah, that's the most important thing. Oh, yeah, real quick. Okay, so we are recently approved with the VA, so that anyone that's uh, currently in the military, uh, a veteran or a dependent, if you if you transferred over your post nine eleven GI Bill to them, they can come to us at Trident Adventures to get all their professional scuba diving certifications and helicopter cast master and all the gear. So like, for example, you come to us to be a dive master. It takes like, I don't know, six, seven weeks to get That's I've never even seen the ocean a day in my life to I am the guy in charge of scuba diving and you get $8,500 worth of gear out of it. And you get your housing allowance as an E5, excuse me, with dependents, which is about $3,300 a month. I mean, it's the best drug deal in the freaking planet right now. You show up to Hawaii, a free vacation, you get paid to be here and you get paid to get all these certifications and you get paid because of the certifications. Wow. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I, it is so much fun. And you have to, I, you get six you get 60 dives in um, just going through the dive master course. And after that, you can become a dive instructor. So a dive master can lead people in scuba diving. Uh, a dive instructor can create scuba divers. So you can make a 10-year-old a, a, a certified scuba diver if you're an instructor. Now, the coolest thing in the world is you could be a helicopter cast master. So that's, that's the thing that, that we're the only people in the world where you could do this. So, and that's only three weeks long, same thing. It's a $26,000 course and your GI bill pays for a hundred percent of it. You don't, not a single penny comes out of your pocket. And uh, yeah, you just jump out of helicopters and learn how to lead people jumping out of helicopters. And it's not the same as military. It's actually designed to be fun. It's purpose is to be fun. <laughs> like that's it. There's no other reason to do this other than to have fun. So you, you as the cast master create the safety bubble uh, to allow people to have fun. Now, I don't care how dangerous you want to be, as long as it's safe. Like, I have people doing backflips and everything and hanging on the skids, doing pull-ups. Like, I had the Gracies do it. I've had a lot of people do that. As long as you, as the cast master, feel it's safe, 
go have fun. That's kind of that's kind of the mentality. I wow. mean, scuba diving, same thing. It's all meant to have fun. Like when I was in the military, anything helicopter work was miserable. Anything if diving, especially, was absolutely miserable. So even though I, I what I did is with with Trident Adventures is I took the cool parts of being a Navy SEAL, and I made a company around the cool parts, and I made it fun. <laughs> That's its it. only That's purpose. Awesome. In fact, I tell my staff the day you stop having fun is the day you need to quit, because having fun is contagious. And if you're having fun, the people you're, you're leading will also have fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's the coolest thing. <clears throat> so you can use your VR knee, which used to be called Voc rehab. That's what chapter 31. You could use chapter 30, which is your, your Montgomery GI bill, or you can use chapter 33, which is your, your post nine 11 GI bill to get all these certifications. It is the best drug deal in the plan. I can that's see terrible. my youngest wanting to do this. <laughs> yeah. Sam, how old is your youngest? 14. Okay, so you have to be 18 to get professional certifications. So wait till they're 18. I should probably yeah. put that out there. However, yeah, wait till you can get school. certified all the way up to master scuba diver. Nice. And you can jump out of a helicopter. You just can't be in charge of jumping out of a helicopter until they're 18. Because 14 year olds don't make great decisions. I know I've got one. <laughs> Usually 18 year olds don't either. <laughs> I did. I was in Bible college. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Listen, dude, that's first of all, that's super exciting. Um, I'm glad that we captured that, Sean. Good catch. Um, what what an incredible opportunity for people to come out. And um, like you said, man, you said it so well, dude, like take that victim mentality and shift it and, and strap on the victor mentality. I love it. Yeah, um, absolutely. I can't uh, I can't thank you enough for being on, dude. I know it's early out there in Hawaii, um, but you live in Hawaii, so I, I won't let you complain. Dude, it's Hawaii. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know um, what I'm doing right after this? Right after this, I'm going to go take uh, three people to jump out of a helicopter, teach two of them how to scuba dive for the first time. Then I'm going e foiling in the afternoon. Then I'm going surfing right after that. Oh, yeah, that sounds, sounds like horrible. a rough life. Horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. All right, man. So, hey, listen, what is the best place for our audience to be able to find you and connect with you? Well, you can go onto our website. So, uh, www.tridentadventures.com. Um, we're also on Instagram. And it's Trident Adventures Hawaii. Yep. So we're there. If you want to do the VA program, or actually the legal way of saying it, the VA approved programs, because anybody can do it. Uh, if you go to the website, it'll actually say VA approved programs. Uh, click there. There's an application. And then we, we walk you through the entire process because uh, the VA makes everything super, super complicated. But we kind of cracked the nut and had to simplify it. So nice. just contact us and we'll simplify the entire process to put you in one of our classes. We only do eight people a class, just so you know. Uh, okay. That, that, that way uh, we don't, because it gets diluted once you do more than that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and we treat our veterans like royalty as, because you know, we all are one. So uh, we like to treat each other as if, uh, you know, the way that you'd like to be treated. You know, Jesus said something like that, you know. So it was in a book awesome. I read once. Yeah. <laughs> In yeah. a book I read once. <laughs> so we, we actually do practice that, and we love our veterans. That's awesome, uh, dude. Yeah, so, so the website, Instagram, we have a bunch of YouTube stuff, too. Uh, you want to see some cool videos, look up Trident Adventures on YouTube. You'll see a bunch of little kids jumping out of helicopters and everything. It's, it's pretty awesome. You'll see our gun range and all that. Yeah, I, I spent one of the nights out at the MIC uh, after I met you, kind of looking through the YouTube videos. I kind of went down that rabbit hole. You got some dope stuff on there, man. All right, go, guys. awesome. Man. <laughs> That's so cool. All right, guys, listen, on the on the behalf of the Vet SOS family, I want to thank everyone for being here, um, for joining us today. Make sure to follow and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favorite pat podcast platforms. Remember, please don't drown in a sea of transition. Grab the Vet SOS lifeline. We'll see you guys later. Booyah. <laughs>